it's very rare that everybody gets their way. People get their say on all sides of an issue, but it is rare for everybody to get their way. Some people who were there on the morning of the 10th at 3.30 in the morning apparently confused getting your say with getting your way. The democracy, the way I'm as a presiding officer in our little democracy here in the city of Santa Cruz, is to make sure everybody gets their say. That is not a guarantee that everybody's going to get their way. And this is a community which I believe, I'm, I don't fear any contradiction on this, this is not a community that is going to support threats of violence and violence as a way of getting your way. So let's talk about the worst of that spectrum was someone threatened to kill you for yes. your, your vote or the way you handled it. Um, right. Tell me, if you can, because um, I want to get to some other topics before we close, about that particular moment for you when you took that call. You were home. It, uh, I was uh, on another call, and this call came in and went to voicemail on my personal telephone. And when I then got off the phone and listened to the message, it was clear and unambiguous, repeatedly threatening my life for voting for the peace initiative and not voting for the ceasefire initiative. It wasn't some random call about just life in general or city council work in general. It was very specific to the vote that I cast and not having cast a vote in favor of the ceasefire resolution. Repeatedly in the phone message, uh, a threat to kill me, and specifically to stab me. And uh, I'm a 73-year-old man, and my wife is 70. Uh, and when we got that message and listened to it, we were both concerned. And so I called the police who came over. They transferred the recording from my phone to their phone. They opened up a felony investigation of threat uh, against the life of a public official in the performance of their duty, which is a separate crime. They were able to identify where that came from. They stopped the vehicle that had the person who made the death threat to me and that person's father. And they interviewed them and they acknowledged that, yes, the young man had uh, admitted that he was the one who had made the death threat to me. The police advised me of that and continued their, their investigation. Yesterday, the father and son called me jointly, uh, called the same number. I took their call. They expressed deep sorrow and regret for what had happened and uh, offered to give me a letter of apology. I said that I appreciated that, and I thought that maybe the best way for us to do that was to meet in my office, which we did at 4.15 this afternoon. Both gentlemen came in. They gave me a letter, which you now have, and we agreed to a joint statement that we would also release. We had a very productive conversation between us, not only about the incident, but about the Middle East, about politics in general and the nature of it in the country these days. And it was a very positive conversation. And what I'm pleased about with all of this is that now the police can close this investigation. The district attorney doesn't have to figure out whether or not to prosecute. I'm not interested in that. That instead of this young man's life being tarnished going forward for the rest of his life, the three of us have worked it out in a civil and civilized way where we can disagree without being disagreeable where we can talk about both our thoughts and our feelings and now move on. And I'm very grateful to the young man and his father for the peaceful way we've ended this with each other.